Thank you for inviting me to give a talk on continuous reheat furnace. My name is Hilol Nandi. Our company develops furnace software furnace expert to simulate and control batch and continuous furnaces. First, I will give an overview of the reheat furnaces with emphasis on product heating, combustion system and thermal balance. I will then follow it up with an actual furnace simulation with FarnExpert software where you will be able to see workings of a reheat furnace. Reheat furnaces are used in steel and aluminum mills to raise the temperatures of steel and aluminum billets, slabs, ingots known as charge or products from ambient to an appropriate rolling temperature. There are various types of continuous reheat furnaces. The most common are walking beam type, the walking heart type and the pusher type. These furnaces have several heating zones with burners placed in, it, in each of these zones for heating. The charges move from one end of the furnace known as the charge end to the other end known as the discharge end thereby raising temperature of the charge or product. The picture here shows a typical continuous reheat furnace with five zones of heating. The zones from right hand sides are top preheat zone, the bottom preheat zone, the top heat zone, the bottom heat zone and the soak zone. The charges enter the furnace at the charge end and move through the entire furnace on skids or rails as support and finally exit the furnace from the discharge end. The burner provides the heat with combustion producing flue gas. The flue gas moves from the discharge end to the charge end and exits the furnace through the flue. Combustion is the rapid oxidation of fuel resulting in the release of usable heat and production of visible flame. A fuel is defined as any substance, solid, liquid or gas which can be easily ignited and burned to produce heat, light and other useful form of energy. The industrial process is however interested in production of heat. This reaction is termed exothermic. Two elements carbon and oxygen burn to form carbon dioxide releasing heat. Hydrogen when burned with burn combines with oxygen to form water vapor and heat is released. Fortunately, in heat process industry, these elements exist in abundance and variety of form. These fuels are termed hydrocarbons. Example of hydrocarbons are coal, number six oil, natural gas, propane gas, etc. Let's take natural gas as an example. It primarily contains methane and ethane. The combustion equation for natural gas is shown in the red box right here. Here one cubic meter of methane co is combined with 10 cubic meters of air to produce almost 8,899 kilocalories of heat. Nitrogen is an inert gas and do not enter into reaction, however they absorb heat and reduce the flame temperature. During perfect combustion, if methane is burnt with oxygen, it produces a flame temperature of 2871 2, degrees centigrade. Using air with meth methane produces flame temperature of about 1927 degrees centigrade. The picture below gives an overview of combustion of natural gas with both air as well as with oxygen. The steel is heated by high temperatures zone walls. The zone walls attain high temperatures from the flames of the burners. The equation of heat flow is shown above where Q is the heat to the steel, A is the charge surface area Tf is the zone wall temperature as read by the thermocouple and Ts the temperature of the steel at any instant. The equation above contains two terms Hr which is 
heat transfer by radiation and HC which is heat transfer by convection. In the next slide I will discuss in details about the radiation and convective heat transfer. <coughs> radiation heat transfer coefficient is given by the top equation. The radiation heat transfer is dependent upon V factor which is F12 that is a fraction of the area of the charge seen by the hot walls. Emissivity given by the eta usually the value is from 0 0.8 to 0 0.95 for steel Stephen Boltzmann's constant sigma and the furnace temperature and the steel temperature. Now the convective heat transfer is given by the bottom equation. The convective heat transfer equation is dependent upon the velocity of the flue flowing over the charge and density of the flue. Now I'm going to talk about heat distribution in a continuous furnace. All the heat from combustion do not go into heating the char steel charges. If it did, it would have been a 100% efficient furnace. The heat that is not utilized in heating the product is known as heat losses, as shown here by black arrows. Different losses are door loss, roll loss, refractory or wall loss, slot loss, skid or water loss. And finally, there is a flue loss, which is the heat that escapes from the furnace with the flue gas. The red arrow depicts the useful heat that goes into raising the charged product temperature. The heating inside the furnace can be represented by Sankey diagram, which gives a pictorial overview of how heat is distributed inside a furnace. The heat category inside the dotted box here is termed as available heat, which constitutes all the losses and the heat to the charge. The heat leaving the furnace is flue loss. Part of the heat from the flue can be recovered to heat the air used for combustion. This is termed as recuperated heat. The total heat required is termed as gross or net heat input. The heat distribution can, can be categorized into groups. They are heat losses. Different heat losses are flue loss, skid or water loss, refractory loss, slot loss, door loss, loss to the rolls. The next is the heat that is utilized. The heat that is utilized is actually heat to the steel. The next, the heat that is lost. The heat that is lost is the flue loss that goes through the flue. Then comes the heat that is recovered. The heat that is recovered goes into heating the air for combustion. And finally, the total heat that is required to heat the furnace, which is the gross or net heat input. The slide gives an overview of the heat balance equation. The overall heat balance equation is shown on the top where on the left hand side of the equation is the heat input and the recovered heat. And the right side of the equation consists of losses, the heat to the steel and the heat that is lost through the flue. If we divide the furnace into small longitudinal section, then the balance equation for the fired and unfired zone consists of few extra terms as shown below. Here you will notice that there are flue heat on both left and right side of the equation. The left side of the equation is the incoming flue from the upstream adjacent zone and the right side of the equation there is an ongoing flue to the downstream adjacent zones.